Hi there, I'm Lana Monday Emmett, and today I am back with Ramey Elvatarwi. How are we, Ramey? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, doing great. Especially happy to have you with us today because we are continuing our discussion on Ramey's book, Can You Really Think and Grow Rich? I think a lot of people wonder that. You know, they see the book on the bookshelf. They're like, okay, does this really work? And Ramey is the living proof of, yes, Think and Grow Rich really works. <laughs> really does. <laughs> so in chapter four of your book, Ramey, I wanted to mention to our audience a couple of key points and then have you elaborate on those. Okay. So the first one, you talk about how that um, you emulate or found someone to emulate that you really admired in business. You talked a little bit about the warrior strategy and the burning ships, and that's that's definitely um, a heel principle through and through. He talks about yeah. that in several books. You talk about trust being gained by working in others' best interest. Yeah. You also talk about indecision and implementing the, the Barnes principle, which yeah. we'll talk a little bit more about that. And you mentioned something that's real key that I think is important in uh, careers today. And it's really looking at how that you work with people versus working for people. Right. So it's for the betterment of everybody. And then the other thing is, and it goes back to really what all these are, it's changing how you think. But instead of recognizing something as just a problem, you're able to find a solution for those problems. So to start off with, tell us a little bit about the whole emulating someone that you admire, because that is a wonderful story. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and remind me if I miss any of these things, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so chapter four was really, it's kind of like an important like shift in my life was uh, chapter four. And there's a lot in that uh, because I was 23 at that time, and and I thought I really made it. I mean, I, I made $50 million. I had net worth $50 million. I had dealerships, insurance companies, and I was living in Tampa, and I thought I accomplished everything there was to accomplish uh, in that book. Uh, and I said, wow, I, I made the millions that uh, Napoleon Hill talked about. And But my goals were almost greater, but I, I kind of settled with that for about a year or two, thinking I did really well, and I was growing the businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then one day, uh, I was uh, watching television, and my favorite show at the time was The Lifestyles of Rich and Famous. And oh, yeah. <laughs> one-hour special. And they never did a one-hour special on the richest man in the world, and that was Adnan Khashoggi. Mm -hmm. And so that's ch chapter four is all about Adnan Khashoggi and try to reach to his level. And and what's really uh, what's amazing is, is when I watched that show, it... I, yeah, they, took, they, took, they talked about the, his 35 homes, his seven jets, his yachts and stuff. But what really impressed me is, you know, they called him, yeah, that, that's him, a head of state without a state. And it was a multi-billion dollar deals that he was uh, doing. And those deals were just uh, amazing. That he, he was a head of state without a state, traveling the world, making deals, and became the richest man in the world uh, making those deals. And... When I was done with the program, I realized and I sat there and I said, you know what? I really don't have anything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, $50 million compared to the billions he had and what he did and uh, what kind of world influence he was. And I was just, a, you know, I had my car and I had a great house in Tampa and I was living a great life. But it was, it, you know, it just was not enough. It was just, OK, that was great. And, and it, it was a lot better than being homeless when I was at, but <laughs> yeah. me feel I stopped short of my goals and then I had to really achieve another one uh, and what I really wanted. The, and I had that same goal from the, when I was 12 to be one of the richest men in the world. So 50 million wasn't it, even though in the 80s it, it was a lot, but the, it wasn't it. So so I, I was watching that show with a few people around me and I told them all that, you know, I'm going to work with this man one day. And everybody kind of laughed at me, and I like it when people laugh at me because it's, uh, it's <laughs> even harder. Right? So, 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 but it changed my mindset and realized, uh, you know, what I wanted. And then, then I had to look back at all of Napoleon Hill's principles, and I had to use a lot of them and use it to a level that most people would never uh, use because I was now going from millions to billions, and, and it was. And it was a guy that traveled the world and was unattainable and couldn't find. And 
And I wanted to work with him to be able to achieve what he did. So I had to find him, convince him to let me work with him and then make billions of dollars with him. So it was a huge goal and you know, a, a right. big re reach. And so one of the first principles, again, was not to procrastinate. And that's yeah. one of the things I learned when I was 12. That's why I left home early. But that was also the same thing with this. It was, okay, now it's I need to start right now. And I sold everything I had, uh, even though I, it was at a fire sale. I, I might have got maybe $10 million for everything I sold because I sold them quick to my partners, to everybody, so I could be free to achieve the goals. Mm -hmm. And this is where one of my other keys that I put in, uh, I talked earlier, you know, kicked in. And it was really important because, again, for most people, fear of loss is greater than hope of gain. Right. And I always turned that around. Now, most people would have been afraid big time to give up what they built after now 20, you know, after 12, 13 years of working to build what I had. Right. But I was willing to risk it all. It, it was, I'll risk the 50 million to make the billion. It, it, to, right. to me, I, was, I didn't care about the, the comfort of the homes and everything else. I sold everything, my car, the house, everything. It was just one goal, one goal of mine, and it's to work with Khashoggi. So, so it was a really important uh, test for myself that I don't have any fear and I can't have fears. And, and then one of the things about selling everything is another principle that was in Think and Grow Rich. And that's when the, when that general went into battle, mm -hmm. you know, and he told his soldiers, you know, he asked one of, the, uh, one of his other general to burn his sh ships. And he told his soldiers, look at all those ships that's burning. You're at number 10 to one, but right. if you don't win, you're going to perish. So by burning all your bridges, it gives you no cho cho choice but to win. Right. You know, so right. they actually won that battle because they had no turning back. And I didn't want to leave myself an out and have an excuse because it was too hard it's to get home or anything else. <laughs> so I burnt my ships uh, by yeah. selling all those things. So, uh, so it was... So there was a lot of principles to was used in that book and then go finding him. And then again, the principles of adversities, never quitting it was part of that because it took me almost two years to even find somebody that knew him. Oh, so wow. it was two years of searching the world and different people and one contact of the other, but never giving up. And, you know, a lot of people give up after, you know, they try a few months or something or but because I made it burning desire, which is the first thing I, I talk about the book, mm -hmm. it was my all, only goal and the only thing that I was only satisfied with was, was to work with them. And then even after I found them, and there's more details in the book, it took me another two years to convince them to let me work with them. And again, approaching him, I took another part of, of the book. I think it was the first chapter of Think and Grow Rich, where there was a guy named Barnes who wanted to work with yep. uh, Edison. And yeah. he just went in there and just informed Edison he's going to be working with him. And Edison saw something in him and, and he let him work side by side. He never said for him, it was always with him. Right. He didn't want to be seen as anything lower. So I, I used that same principles, you know, for, for, for Barnes, it worked a little easier than for me because Edison saw something and he let him work there for a while until, until uh, Edison and the, the electric typewriter and Marcus the typewriter made millions of dollars off that. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up working with Edison. But for me, I use the same tactic, but I had and I kind of laughed at me a little bit and say, yeah, you know, we're busy now. And, you know, so yeah. <laughs> I did, but, uh, I'll come back in a couple of years. So, so it didn't work because he, he was at a different level, but I, that didn't stop me. I mean, I still chased him and the, and the book has a lot more details of how I, I pursued him and, and, and pushed and pushed and pushed. And I probably had, I don't know, 2000 no's and get lost in those two, two extra years. And, but at the end, it was uh, finally, you know, when I was down to my last study and I owed $75,000 of my American Express, you know, it, uh, I asked him, okay, I paid my dues, just give me one shot, one shot, one deal. If I can, right. if I do it better than you, you want, uh, you expect, then we work together. So again, running out of money was a positive thing because it forced my hand to push him. You know, there was no more mm -hmm. waiting. It was like, right now, I got to do it right now, get a deal done and prove it out. So, right. so again, another adversity of running out of money, you know, pushed me to be able to close the first deal with him. And then uh, I closed it better than, than he expected um, uh, by a factor, at least two or three. And he was impressed. And then we started working together. And by the end of the chapter, you know, I, I made the first billion dollars with him. 
Uh, so by 32, I had a net worth of a billion dollars for the goal I had. But from 23 to uh, to 30, 32, so that was eight years of committing to a, a certain goal. Mm -hmm. so, but again, the, the books work and the Napoleon Hill is always right with his principles. And, and no matter how big the goals are, because the, the goals can be, again, anybody could want hundred thousand dollars a year or a million dollars or even billion dollars. And so my goals got into the billion and and it's still achievable. So the only limits anybody, anybody has is the ones that they put it on themselves. And the other good thing also about moving into that level, you ch you start growing and changing the way you think because you know at first it was just an abstract thought of billion dollars, but being around him and being around other billionaires and being around uh, negotiating with them, you know, billion dollars was a regular conversation uh, at dinner and the deals and stuff. So it became a reality. So it's really important to put yourself in a place that everything becomes a reality mm -hmm. to you instead of just a hope and uh, and, and a wish. And because if, if if people are making billions of dollars and you see they're not that much smarter than you are, there's no reason you can't. It's just you know just uh, learning and and pushing and and doing everything you need to do and just follow up those goals. So so I get I get mentioning part of something I mentioned in other chapters. You do become what you think of most of the time. Yeah. So my thoughts became you know a, you know a billionaire thought, and I that's what I ended up bec becoming because that's what I started thinking of most of the time. And, you know I stopped thinking of millions or I stopped thinking uh, of just surviving. You know it, it changed my mindset, and then the, the things came, the, the opportunities came that I took advantage of, and you. Again, like uh, Don says, you know, Napoleon Hill mentions uh, action 77 times in the book. Yep. So, so even when you have those thoughts and you're burning those eyes, you got to take action on what you just, uh, uh, you're, you're noticing for the way you change your mind. Jump on those things and don't feel like you can't do it because you can. And again, if, if you're afraid of it or if you think you can't, then you'll, again, you're stopped again. So it's really... Important. So that chapter was really a big jump from where yeah. I started out and where I ended up and also not only making the money, but also he was on touch. Everybody in the world wanted to work with that man. Kishoka. He was the most powerful man in the world to break into his inner circle and then work with him and be with him 24 seven for those eight years. It was uh, uh, was an amazing experience that I became I became a world citizen instead of just being, being just an American that was around right. America and stuff and think about the rest of the world. You know, it changed my views about the world and uh, and how I saw the world. It changed my views about how I saw a billion dollars, and it changed it changed a lot of things. So, uh, but it all started with a burning desire of wanting to do that and following all those principles of burning the bridges and mm -hmm. or your ships and and just not leaving yourself an out and just uh, believing that you can do it. I think one of the most interesting quotes that you have in that chapter, it says, trust is gained by working in others' best interest. Right. What, what do you mean by that? Well, even though I was after Adman, okay, because, and I've been after a lot of other people to work with, as Carl Icahn and other people, you know, I still do it with, in, in my heart, with a good intent. To me, in my mind, I was going to work with them. I'll be the best person that's ever worked with them. And I told them that. So by having the good intentions and doing it, not because I want to manipulate him or take advantage of him and really be of service to him. So, uh, that's what I meant by that is when you do something, you've made a commitment now to, to become that person, to be of use or something. Or, or like even the, later on in the chapter when I went to LA and wanted to uh, uh, or uh, go to the Playboy Mansion to play a little bit of everything. So I became friends with Marilyn Grabowski. She was in her seventies, and 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 she had the key. She knew she knew half, and she knew a, a lot of uh, uh, you know. She interviewed playmates and stuff. So I had to again learn from the circles around him. But I, when I made Marilyn a friend, you know, she stayed a friend till even today. So, so you make that commitment and, and have good intention to become friends. So, so even if you have a goal, it's not a negative goal because you don't, you're not trying to manipulate or do something wrong to other people or just do it for yourself. So, so you have to commit to be that person that you've decided to do or be to, for that person. That's some very good advice. <laughs> very, very good. Well, I want to say that if our viewers want to get a copy of your book, 
Can You Really Think and Grow Rich? They can go to Ramey's website. It is can you really think and grow rich.com? It's right down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and we're really thrilled that you joined us today. So I think maybe next time we're going to delve into chapter five. Yeah. And that has a little bit to do with um, decisive action, I believe. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us today, Ramey. And thanks to our viewers for being here. We appreciate everybody and we will see you next time.